Hey everybody, this is World War Guy here, and today I'm going to show you what the US military would have worn as a pack for World War I and World War II. So we're going to start with World War I right here. This pack is the M1910 Haversack. Um, before it was made, the US military wanted to create a pack that would allow the US soldier to, to carry only the absolute necessary. And so they decided to make this design, which is a terrible design, and I'll show you why in this haversack. Let's get right into it. Uh, this is the Army haversack. Uh, this pouch right here would be considered the meat camp pouch. Inside you would just have your mess tin. Sadly, I don't have the top to this one. 1918 there. Right, you just put it back in if you can with one hand. Okay, we can't. But it's secure. You secure it with a button there. Uh, this pack is really nice because you have a lot of field repairs all over it, not just the meat camp pouch. There and there. Uh, I attach my M1910 T handle shovel to it just to give you an idea of what it would look like. Uh, and then inside, and you have a big U.S. stamp here, which also indicates that it's Army. And here, sadly, I don't exactly know what the markings mean. Uh, if anyone knows, you know, please comment. It would be a great help. Uh, it has a lot of markings on this pack. Let's see there. That R366 maybe. There's that. Alright, we're gonna move on. So that's the Army M1910 Haversack. And if we move to this one, this one is the Marine Corps M1912 Haversack. Now, the main difference from the Marine Corps one and the Army one is the color. This is more like a mustard yellow color. Well, that one's more like a beige white color. Uh, so let's get into why pack idea was a pretty bad one. Because it was just a whole bunch of flaps. See, it's not an actual backpack or anything. That's why it was a pretty bad design. And it allows you to only carry the absolute necessary. So you really gotta think what you wanna put in there. And I really like this uh, pack. You have the stitching here, which is like a, a forest green color, which also indicates that it's marine. And here we have, it was later reused for Boy Scout Troop 136. Really neat. I really like this pack. Out of uh, all my packs, this is like one of my favorite ones, my top favorite ones. And this is the back, and it's, it's 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 the same as the army one. The only difference is this buckle or this part here. The Marine Corps one is squared off, while the army one is rounded off. That's basically the only difference, and the color. And these hooks here, you're probably wondering, you'd attach it to your cartridge belt, which we're going to go into that one real quick. So you'd attach this to your cartridge belt. Alright, moving on. Here, we're jumping into World War II now, and pre-World War II, I suppose. This is the M1928 Haversack. Um, obviously, it was made in 1928, or first adopted in 1928. Uh, all U.S. troops, uh, Army, would have used this during World War II. Uh, later on, you can see them using the Muset bag right there in the middle, but we'll get onto that later. So the difference between the World War II version and the Army version is for the mess, mess kit pouch, the meat cam pouch, whatever you want to call it, instead of a bun, it's now a strap with a buckle. But inside, it's still for your mess tin. This one's 1944. Um, you have the World War II style buckle now, instead of, 
here. Let's instead of the World War One style. And the color is also more of a green color instead of a white or yellow color. And I was saying that it attached to the cartridge belt. As we can see here, we have this strap divides here, goes somewhere in the front. And the back here, again, to the end of the cartridge belt. And then it hook up here as well. And here I just have, you know, I also wanted to show you what it would look like attached to it. And so here I just have an M1910 canteen cover and the M1924 uh, first aid pouch with a later war first aid uh, car, Carlisle. Oh, I forgot the name, sadly. It'll come to me after the video, probably. So you would have seen a lot of U.S. Army troops during World War II using this pack. And then, since you're probably wondering, what did the Marine Corps use? Well, the Marine Corps used this pack. This is the 782 pack used by the Marine Corps during World War II. Uh, this is a reproduction. All my other packs are original. This is the only repro, but for the sake of the video, I brought it out to show you the difference between packs that were used during World War II. Uh, this one is actually a backpack, which is nice. Not just a whole bunch of flaps. Uh, you'd attach your bayonet to the side here. Same as these packs as well. You'd attach it here. Slide down to here, right here really nice uh, it was actually like a system you'd have another pack of roughly the same size called a knapsack and you'd attach it to the bottom here but it was mostly for transport not necessarily combat so yeah and then the back if you're wondering what these are or this is uh, you'd attach it to your cartridge belt so that in the back in the middle it'd be leveled show you here see that hole there you put that hook in there to keep it level all right let's move on to the next haversack before we move on to the new setback here we have a, a British made haversack the M1910 my bad M1928 model uh, during World War II before the United States joined the war they lent a lot of uh, equipment and supplies to the British and instead of just paying it all back the British decided that hey how about we just make some of your uh, field gear and supplies and all that so the US you know agreed to it and you know I can go into more detail than that uh, the British made a lot of items for the US such as you know the haversack you can ha see canteens first aid pouches I'm pretty sure the M41 jacket, and I'm sure a lot of other things, I just don't know all of them. Uh, it's the exact same design or concept. You just have the British style buckle. Uh, the canvas material is different. You have the US there. Style buckle. And then if you see inside, British, you have US. I can't read that. 1944 and then British made. So this was made in 1944 uh, and it's British made as you can see. And here's the back. These are reproduction straps because the original ones were gone so they're the US version which is incorrect. This is what the buckle should look like if it was British made. And you have the British hook there. And the pack itself is dated 1945. But it's uh, inside, and I'm not going to go digging for it. So, 44, 45. Now, moving along to the last one, or last pack of the day, is the moose setback. If I'm correct, it's the M1936 moose setback. Uh, if I'm correct, correct me if I'm wrong, it was mainly for the paratroopers. It was mainly designed for the paratroopers. Because as you can see, it's an actual backpack as well. You have a little side pocket here. Um, as well as it was mainly for paratroopers, if you go like 
If you search later war photos, you'll see a lot of US infantry using this pack because it's a lot better than just a whole bunch of flaps. You know, this one's actually a backpack. Um, this one you'd attach to your M36 suspenders. So you attach it with hooks. So it's not an it's not really a backpack. The closest one to a backpack is the Marine Corps one. But it's still better than the haversack that we've been seeing in the video. This one is dated 1942. And then these holes here, honestly, I don't know how it got here. I like to believe it was either shrapnel or a bullet. But who knows, uh, that's just my opinion. And it'd be nice if it was like that, honestly. All right, so there's that. That's my video for the haversacks and packs, really, used by US troops during World War I and World War II. If you guys like the video, please comment, subscribe, and rate. Have a good day.